Welcome to Scripture Snippets. Today we're continuing in the Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 to 10. And today's message is titled, Water into Wine. And here we're going to read about Christ's first miracle, turning water into wine at a wedding feast. So let's dig in. Verse 1. On the third day there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding. And when they had ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Whatever he says to you, do it. Now there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing twenty or thirty gallons apiece. And Jesus said to them, Fill the water pots with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, Draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. And when the master of the feast had tasted the water that was made wine, and he did not know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, Every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. And so here we see the first miracle of Jesus turning water into wine at a wedding feast. And when you consider this miracle, it could seem almost a little peculiar because Christ will go on from here to raise people from the dead, to cleanse lepers, to give sight to the blind, hearing to the deaf, casting out demons, walking on water. I mean, the miracles are so, so many that John says they couldn't possibly be included in his gospel. And so Christ will do so many amazing signs and wonders, and yet he starts off with this, turning water into wine at a wedding. And so when we think about this, what is the significance of it? Turning something, turning water into something that could seem an, not an essential thing, wine, uh, not a tr life transforming substance and almost superfluous type of uh, uh, luxury at a at a wedding feast and yet this is important to God and so we're going to look at the reasons why it is important to God and this will point to the true character of God and why this is the first <clears throat> miracle that will lead to many others. So let's start off with the fact that this wedding ceremony was the location of his first miracle. Now we know God cares very much about marriages. In fact, the first relationship he gave to man was between Adam and Eve, marriage. And from there they would multiply and fill the earth. Marriage is so significant to God. And this is why he would christen his ministry with the first miracle of being at a wedding. We see throughout the Old Testament that Israel is referred to as the bride of God. And in the New Testament, the church is referred to as the bride of Christ. So marriage is so special to God that it's quite appropriate his first miracle would be at a wedding. And the next thing is why he would turn water into wine. I mean, wine is, again, not, not an essential thing. And yet throughout Scripture, wine is a picture of, of when the harvest of the land is plentiful. And it's an abundant, fertile soil that the Lord blessed the land with. And we see that when there's vineyards planted, it's because the soil is very rich, and very hardy because if you're dealing with famines and so forth you don't start with growing vineyards you start with growing barley and wheat but instead 
when the land is very fruitful, that's when you plant the vineyards. And so wine, of course, is a produce of grapes. And this, the wine and grapes are always a picture of God's abundant blessings upon the land. And so that's why wine is always a picture of a covenant God is going to bless his people with. We see this in John 15, where even Christ compares the relationship we have with him as being a grape is to the vine. Because he said, you are the branches and I am the vine. If you abide in me, you will bear much fruit, comparing the whole thing to a vineyard. And so this is a, a very good picture of God revealing this idea of turning water into wine. And of course, we see at the Last Supper where he compares his blood to the wine that they were actually drinking. So wine is a very appropriate picture of so many things of God that that is why he would turn ordinary water into wine. Now this water was set aside for purification purposes. They did add some water to it, but it was set aside for ceremonial washing before they would eat. It wasn't necessarily for cleanliness, but more so for, again, ritualistic cleaning of their hands and so forth. And so the idea that he would turn water that was set aside for external cleansing to wine that is compared to his very blood that cleanses from the inside out. In fact, Jesus told the Pharisees, you worry so much about your, the, what's on the outside, your appearance and how you uh, appear to People, why don't you worry more about the inside? Then your outside will be clean also. And so Jesus is using wine because we know that wine had been used from time to time for medicinal purposes when the water supply was contaminated or polluted or was carrying bacteria and viruses. And so wine is a picture more of internal cleaning rather than just external cleaning. So that's another reason why he would use these symbols to reveal the new covenant he has in his blood. And the next thing, let's take a look at the idea of his mom. You know, it appears that Mary's almost pressuring Jesus into performing a miracle. Because Jesus said, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? And woman wasn't... Uh, was not a, 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 I guess, a degrading phrase to say. In fact, it was endearing in those days. But at the same time, he was saying, you know, my hour has not yet come. Well, what changed? Because only moments later did his hour come. But I believe, remember, his father told him what to do, sometimes step by step he only did and spoke what his father was telling him to speak and do and so i believe there were some times that jesus was uh purposely uh waiting for the father to reveal what he would do next that's why he would go away and pray often with his father to get new instructions for the day and so forth and so you know when christ said my hour has not yet come and yet through Mary's persuasion, he goes and does the miracle. Is that because he was forced to do it by his mom out of guilt or compulsion? No, I don't believe so at all. I believe that this miracle was purposely set up like this so that God could show all of us, sometimes there are people in our lives that are there to encourage us to be all we can be in Christ. Because there Mary is who dear, deeply loved Jesus and she would encourage Jesus to perform his first miracle. And just as Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, did he need to be baptized? Absolutely not. But I believe Christ purposely was willing to set this hour up so that we can all look and see Mary actually took a part in encouraging him into his first miracle. And what does that mean to us? That means all of us should be paying attention 
to the encouragers God is placing in our lives. Because sometimes we lack, we lack uh, uh, confidence to move in what God has called us to do. Sometimes we uh, lack the experience and we just believe that we can't, we can't actually succeed at whatever God's calling us into. But the people who love us the most very often can be used by God to encourage us to take a step of faith into accomplishing what God is calling us to do. And so here Mary is part of God's will in leading Christ into the first miracle. And so we should all be listening to the encouragers God has placed in our lives. Because it's important to realize that we need others and God does speak through our, our earthly parents, but most of all, our spiritual friends, partners, and spiritual parents. And hopefully we all have them in our lives to encourage us to do what God is calling us to do. And so here we have the first miracle of turning water into wine at a wedding as a picture to us that even something small like wine for a, a wedding is important to God if it's important to those he loves. Because sometimes we don't necessarily pray for the small things. Now to us, this would be huge if we ever turned water into wine through the power of the Holy Spirit. That would be something we would never stop talking about. But for God, this was a very small miracle for Christ to perform compared to all the future miracles that he will, come, that he will perform. And yet, because it was important to Mary, because I'm sure it was important to the bridegroom, it would have been embarrassing to run out of wine during a, a feast that will probably take a full week long. And yet, it's important to God if it's important to us. And it's okay to make your requests known to God. And there's nothing too small for him. And of course, there's nothing too large. So brothers and sisters, make all your requests known to God, big and small, because you'll never, you'll never be able to predict the great miracle God will perform in the midst of that but most of all, how you will be transformed when you see the result of your faith. God bless you guys.